Do you notice something wrong in the world today? Can you feel it? Are you ready for it? More importantly, do you know Christ? Sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters in Christ. I greet you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today we gather to discuss a fundamental truth of the Christian faith. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. This truth is the cornerstone of our belief and the foundation of our hope. In a world filled with diverse spiritual teachings and New Age movements, it is crucial to reaffirm our commitment to the one true living God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We will also explore the dangers of teachings that emphasize finding Christ within, as propagated by groups like the Freemasons and those influenced by Kabbalistic traditions. Let us begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, seeking your wisdom and guidance. Open our hearts to the truths of your word and help us to discern the true path to salvation. May your Holy Spirit move within us, illuminating our minds and strengthening our spirits. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Bible clearly states that the only way to eternal life in heaven is through Jesus Christ. This is an exclusive claim, meaning there is no other path to salvation. In John 14:6, Jesus declares, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. This statement is both profound and unequivocal. Jesus is not merely a way. He is the way. He is the truth and the life. And no one can come to the Father except through him. The exclusivity of Jesus as the only way to God is further emphasized in Acts 4.12, where Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, proclaims, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. This verse underscores that salvation is found in no one else but Jesus Christ. He is the unique mediator between God and humanity, as written in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. The exclusivity of Jesus as the only path to salvation is a truth that must be proclaimed boldly and without compromise. In a world that increasingly embraces relativism and the idea that all paths lead to God, we must stand firm in the truth of the gospel. This exclusivity is not a matter of intolerance, but of truth. Jesus Christ is the only way because he alone has the power to save. He alone lived a sinless life, died for our sins, and rose again, conquering death. As believers, our faith is grounded in the historical reality and divine authority of Jesus Christ. The Christian faith is rooted in the revelation of God to the patriarchs, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. These figures are central to the biblical narrative and the unfolding of God's redemptive plan. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the one true living God, distinct from the gods of other religions and philosophies. In Exodus 3.6, God reveals himself to Moses at the burning bush, saying, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, 
the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. This identification underscores the continuity of God's covenantal promises and his faithfulness to his people. Throughout the Old Testament, God consistently reveals himself as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, affirming his covenantal relationship with Israel. This relationship reaches its fulfillment in Jesus Christ, who is the promised Messiah and the true heir of the promises made to the patriarchs. In Matthew 22:32, Jesus affirms the reality of the resurrection and the living nature of God by stating, I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob. God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. This declaration emphasizes that the God of the Bible is not a distant or abstract deity, but a living and active God who engages with his creation. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is the creator, sustainer, and redeemer. He is the God who sent his son, Jesus Christ, into the world to save sinners. In John 3:16, we read, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. This verse encapsulates the heart of the gospel and the unique role of Jesus in God's plan of salvation. In recent years, the rise of New Age movements and spiritual teachings has presented a challenge to the traditional Christian understanding of salvation. These teachings often incorporate elements of Christianity, but they reinterpret them in ways that significantly deviate from Orthodox Christian doctrine. Prominent among these New Age proponents are the Freemasons, who blend elements of esotericism and mysticism, including ideas borrowed from the Kabbalah, a mystical tradition within Judaism. They popularize the notion of a divine spark or Christ consciousness within each person, suggesting that enlightenment or spiritual awakening can be achieved by tapping into this inner divinity. While the idea of inner transformation isn't alien to Christianity, the emphasis on self-realization and discovering one's own divinity sharply contrasts with the biblical teaching of our need for a savior. The Bible teaches that we have all sinned and fall short of God's glory, Romans 3.23. And salvation is not a result of our own efforts or inner enlightenment but a gift of God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ, Ephesians 2, 8 to 9. These New Age teachings promote a form of Gnosticism, a heresy that was vigorously opposed by the early church. Gnosticism holds that special, often hidden knowledge, Gnosis, is required for salvation, thereby diminishing the need for faith in Christ's atoning work on the cross and shifting the focus to individual spiritual achievement. In Colossians 2.8, Paul warns believers, Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. This caution is particularly relevant today as we encounter philosophies and spiritual teachings that diverge from the gospel. The idea of finding Christ within, as promoted by New Age movements and Freemasonry, undermines the necessity of Christ's sacrificial death and resurrection. It's essential to remember that salvation is found not within ourselves, but in the person and work of Jesus Christ, who is the way, the truth, and the life. John 14:6. As we move away from the confusion of New Age teachings and the misdirection they bring, our path becomes clearer. The Bible, in its divine wisdom, provides us with the true path to salvation, a path that is not shrouded in mystery or hidden knowledge, but is open and accessible to all. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is the door to this path. In John 10:9, Jesus himself states, I am the door, by me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. Here, he is not speaking in metaphors or esoteric language, but in clear, straightforward terms. He is the way to salvation, not an inner enlightenment, not a hidden knowledge, but a divine pathway that is available to all who believe in him and his finished work on the cross. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 10, verse 9 to 10, 
echoes this truth, writing, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. This message underscores the simplicity and accessibility of the gospel. It is not a secret doctrine for a select few, but a universal invitation extended to all. The exclusivity of Jesus as the only way to God is not a message of exclusion, but rather one of invitation. An invitation to all people, regardless of their past or present circumstances, to receive the free gift of eternal life. In John 6:37, Jesus assures us, All that the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. This promise is a testament to the openness and inclusivity of the gospel. Jesus welcomes all who come to him in faith. So as we step away from the shadows of confusion and misdirection, let us embrace the radiant light of the gospel, the open invitation of Jesus Christ, our Savior. For he is the way, the truth, and the life. As we have established the truth of Jesus being the only way to salvation, it is crucial now more than ever in the face of the prevalence of New Age teachings and esoteric philosophies, for us to exercise vigilance and discernment. As written in verse John 4, 1, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. This powerful truth emphasizes our need to scrutinize all teachings and spiritual experience against the unwavering truth of the scripture. The Bereans, whose actions are recorded in Acts 17.11, provide a prime example of discernment in action. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. They did not accept teachings unquestioningly, but instead they diligently compared them with the scriptures to ensure their accuracy. As followers of Christ, we are called upon to be deeply rooted in the Word of God, growing in our understanding of His unchanging truth. Paul, in Ephesians 4.14-15, urges us, believers, to mature in our faith, that we henceforth be no more children, tossed to and fro, and carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the slight of men and cunning craftiness, whereby they lie in wait to deceive but speaking the truth in love, may grow up into him in all things, which is the head, even Christ. This growth in maturity empowers us not only to recognize and resist false teachings, but also to speak the truth in love, guiding others away from deception and toward the true gospel of Jesus Christ. Amid a world swirling with spiritual confusion and competing voices, the clarity and authority of scripture remain our steadfast foundation for faith. As we navigate the waters of discernment and vigilance, we arrive at an important juncture in our spiritual journey. The exclusivity of Jesus Christ as the only way to heaven, a truth we hold dear, bestows upon us a great responsibility, the call to share the gospel with others. This is a charge that has been entrusted to us by Jesus Christ himself in what is referred to as the Great Commission. As recorded in Matthew 28:19 to 20, Jesus commands us, Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. This great commission is not a mere suggestion, but a divine mandate, urging us to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those in our sphere of influence. It is not enough to simply hold the truth in our hearts. We must actively participate in dispersing it among others. This involves not just evangelism, but also discipleship, guiding others towards growth in their faith and understanding of God's word. In our pursuit to fulfill the Great Commission, it is paramount to approach others with compassion and understanding. Many are drawn to New Age teachings and esoteric philosophies 
out of a genuine yearning for spiritual growth and meaning. By engaging them with the love and truth of Christ, we can lead them onto the true path to salvation and a relationship with the living God. Let us remember, the gospel is not merely a message to be shared, but a life to be lived, and our lives may be the only gospel some people will read. Let us close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the truth of your word and the salvation we have in Jesus Christ. Help us to stand firm in the truth and to discern false teachings. Give us the courage and compassion to share the gospel with others, guiding them to the true path of salvation. May your Holy Spirit guide us and empower us to live faithfully for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for accompanying me on this enlightening journey through the only way to heaven, Jesus Christ and the true God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The faith and resilience of walking with Christ has hopefully inspired you, and I hope to have helped you too. We are excited to announce that Bible Adventures for Children is coming soon. This new series is designed to help children learn about the teachings of the Bible in a fun and engaging way. Some of the artistic artwork seen in this video will also be featured in the cartoon series. Please stay tuned for the release to help children, because as you know, the dark forces are targeting our children, and they are the future of our world and of utmost importance to Jesus Christ. We now extend an invitation to you, not merely to support our ministry, but to become an integral part of our divine mission and purpose. You can like and share this video, or you can also visit our website at awakeningrighteousness.com, where you will discover a free blog, Christian canvas art, and a vast range of Christian books that delve even deeper into the profound teachings of the Bible. Each book serves as a beacon, illuminating the path to awaken the righteous version of yourself. By standing with us, your support breathes life into our ministry, enabling us to disseminate the teachings of the Bible and ignite faith in many hearts. You have the power to contribute to the saving of souls and to make a difference on earth. Stay blessed, awaken the righteous version of yourself, and join us in this holy mission of saving souls. God be with you. Amen. Thank you.